Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm Sean, and if there's one thing I've seen a lot of lately, questions on YouTube, social media, magazines, it's how do you stretch for mountain biking? What are some stretches for mountain biking? Everybody always goes to yoga, or they say, oh, the back of your calf muscles, your hamstring, your back, maybe your neck, uh, maybe you have cranky shoulders. Um, you could just be getting over an injury. Uh, I hear a lot of guys out on the trail, they might complain that their ankles bother them from maybe falling on a misstep somehow. Well, this video is for you. I'm gonna walk you through stretches for mountain biking. If you enjoy mountain biking, even if you don't, honestly, if you do this out of bed every morning, you'll feel better for it. Uh, and also, doing these stretches before mountain biking will help you avoid injury. So. That's always a plus. Um, I'm not gonna make it too complicated. I'm not gonna walk you through every little detail. So if you wanna do this along with me, feel free to pause a lot. And then just uh, for memory's sake, I'm just gonna work from the bottom all the way up. You could do this in any order that you feel like. If you find a tight spot, you may wanna stop there and work a little bit more. Maybe it's your shoulders or neck. Uh, Two things I want you to focus on while doing this, breathing and your posture. A lot of people will tell you, if you've ever been to a yoga class, take deep breaths. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is big inflated chest. Well, I don't want you to do big inflated chest. It's better to focus more on your diaphragm. If you've ever lied down on your back, you'll notice it's not your chest that rises and falls, it's your belly. So think of the breath as coming a little bit deeper from your gut, you know, what pushes your lungs. That's where you should take nice, deep breaths. Don't over-exaggerate it. Um, second thing is posture. You want your ankles, hips, shoulders, all within line. And you also want to try to make your back and your neck and your head straight too. One of the tricks to do this is think of your shoulders as a guideline want your feet to be shoulder width apart so try to line your armpits up with your feet you know next for straightening your back don't try to push your stomach out or arch your back for any way for any reason um, but rather tilt your hips forward uh, one way to do this is to imagine just kind of like like cleaning or sitting on a bar stool you might Practice bending your knees just slightly, but bring your pelvis inward and kind of use your stomach muscles to help pull your hips forward so it straightens your spine and you're not over exaggerating the curve in your, your back. So, without further delay, let's begin. First stretch we're going to work on is your ankles. And a lot of people will um, overlook your ankles, thinking, well, why do I need to stretch my ankles? A lot of guys, when they fall off a mountain bike, you reach for your foot. And if you land the wrong way, you can twist your ankle, you can roll your ankle, maybe even break your ankle if you get a cut between your two rocks. So, simple thing is just step forward one time and lean on the side of your ankle. Just do that four or five times. Switch and do it with the other leg. Next thing is you wanna put weight on your front leg, put your foot behind you, and just roll your foot around. About 10 times one direction, 10 times the other direction. Switch, do it with the other leg. Um, next, your calves. If you have steps or stairs anywhere in your house, that's real easy. Just balance on it like that. If you don't have steps or stairs or a rock, anything you can make as a step, good old downward dog always helps. Just get down on your hands and knees or in a push-up position. Make sure your feet are shoulder width apart, hands are shoulder width apart. Straighten your back. Use your arms to push your body up into your legs and that's how you're going to get this stretch in your calf. Look something like this. Six, 
for a little extra, you can walk back, hang there a little bit, come up real slow, try to stretch out, let your arms hang, stretch out your shoulders a little bit. You can go back down, do it some more. But the idea is you're trying to stretch your calves out. Um, next is your quads, front of your leg. Just, and this is where posture helps because you might lose your balance real easily doing this. So pay attention, try to stand straight, pull your hips in forward, strengthen your, your tummy muscles, your abdominals, and take your time, slow. Don't act like a dog where you're, you know, trying to get your knee over a fire hydrant, but just try to stay straight, use your hips to balance, and pull your leg up behind you, both hands if it helps. That's really going to stretch your, your quad there really good and nice. Do it with the other leg. Um, make it like a 10 count. If you're really tight, do it two times or a 20 count, that might help. Um, the back of your legs, your hamstrings, and your hips, or your butt muscles, if you want to be frank. Now, this is one that people get wrong a lot, and they wake up stiff a lot. So, what I'm going to do is bring this leg over, wrap my shoulder, wrap my uh, my arm around my knee, and try to bring it into my chest. I'm going to lean back on my other arm and just look over my shoulder and try to pull my leg to the side as much as I can on the inside. And I'm gonna hold that for a good 10 or 20 seconds. Then I'm gonna do the same with the other leg. And that's really gonna stretch out your hip muscle. Another way to do that is pull your feet together, use your elbows to put them on your knees and get some leverage. Grab your feet with your hands and use your biceps to pull your upper body down and you'll feel that in not only your hips but your lower back especially. This will not only help make your biceps a little stronger when you're riding over tough trails but it'll also help loosen up your lower back and your hips. From there you can turn around, arch your back, and then reach forward as far as you can, pulling with your fingers. Once you can't pull any further, relax and use your hips to pull your lower back down and that will stretch up your upper back, or stretch out your upper back. The key to that is to try to not bring your butt up off your heels. Keep your butt down, use your hip muscles to pull your back, try to elongate it. Don't twist your back to try to pop it. Um, you can actually injure yourself that way. So it's better to just, if you're gonna do something like that, try to lay on your back straight with your knees bent. And if you've ever gone to a chiropractor, they may have done this to you. Use your hands to bring your head, your chin up towards your chest. Loosen yourself up so that you feel like all of your spine is touching the ground. Then, slowly exhale, take a deep breath, breathe out and pull your head up. Again, I'm not using my neck muscles to pull my head up. I'm only using my arms to pull my head up and I'm trying to keep the rest of my body limp so that if I do this right, I might feel a couple nice pops in my back and that'll loosen me up even more. Now, just like the chiropractor tells you or a massage therapist tells you, exhale deep on that, that extension and that's what'll help you loosen up. Now, when it comes to your muscles being tight, um, I don't have to be a chiropractor to say your muscles need oxygen. So that's why focusing on your breathing will help when you're stretching. Um, moving on, something you can do for your hamstrings is get, you know, a double shoulder width apart on your feet to a com comfortable stance where you can 
get a nice pull on the inside of your leg and try to keep your feet flat. Do that to the other side, hold it for a 10 count, do it again and bring your toes up, balancing down on your heel and you'll get the back of your hamstring. You could also do this on a piece of furniture uh, or the back of your trunk of your car, the tailgate of a pickup truck. Anything that you can put your foot up on to get that stretch under your leg, get a nice pull in there, will help loosen your legs up a little bit. Another way to stretch out your hip, this is my favorite one. I'm gonna show you how to do it on a bike. And again, furniture, trunk of a car, tailgate of a truck, anything that you can get your foot up on high enough will work. Just get your foot up, lay it down sideways, and lean into it. Much like when I had my arm wrapped around my knee and I was pulling it, the weight of my body is what I'm using to pull that hip muscle around the side of my, my ass, really. But that's another way you can stretch out your hip. Okay, now, moving on to your forearms. This is one way that a lot of guys, you know, you, when you're riding your mountain bike, you're gripping a lot. Sometimes, maybe you're having too much fun and you're death gripping a lot and you get tense in your forearms. Two ways to stretch that out is to grab your arm, or not your arm, but your hand. And all I'm gonna do is just use my thumb to push my hand down, use my fingers to bend my arm upward. And what I'm trying to do is stretch out the top of my forearm right in there. Just like that. And I'll hold that for a while. Switch arms and I'll do it to the other arm. And that'll release some of the tension in my upper arm. Now for underneath your arm, if you get carpal tunnel or tennis elbow sometimes, uh, you can get down on your hands and knees and just turn your, arm, turn your hands inward with your fingers facing you instead. And use your hips to pull backwards Keeping your palms flat will tighten that so you'll feel a nice pull right in below your, your elbow there. Right in there. Uh, next, your shoulders. This is where posture comes into play. Again, feet shoulder width apart. Try to keep your hips, your back, everything nice and straight. And just swing your arms. Back and forth. If this hurts, then don't do it too rapidly. You know, nice and slow, maybe lower your arms. Maybe you should hook your arms together and try to pull one across your chest in various positions. You know, if you've got a pull back behind your rotator cuff, it may be too tight. It could help to lean against the wall and do that as well. So, swing in your arms. Windmills forward, do about 10 of these. And then switch, go the other way, do another 10 of those. You know, get it good and shaken out. Shoulder rolls. If you feel any popping or cracking or pulling, then it's probably a good reason you're doing these. Turn it around and go the other way. You can only do about four or five. It's not detrimental that you do 10 or 20. Uh, next, your neck. Hang your neck down. Just look at the ground, breathe, relaxed, and try to hold that for a 10 count. Look up, flex, and not really flex your neck. Don't try to bend your neck. You could hurt yourself that way, but rather expand your chest, drop your shoulders back, and look up. Then tilt your neck to the side. If, again, if you've ever gone to a yoga class, a lot of yoga practitioners and instructors will tell you to reach over your head and pull it like that. I don't want you to pull your head, just let the natural weight of your head hang your neck over to the side. Get some extension through the side of your neck. If you're not quite sure you're doing this right, pull up on the top of your ear 
like you're a little kid and your mom's scolding you for something and grab it on your ear, that will straighten your head into the right position and you'll feel a nice little stretch through there. Do that for about a 10 count. Hang your head the other way. Same thing. You know, look side to side. As soon as you feel nice and loose and limbered up, now we can go ride this mountain bike and have some fun. All right, thanks again for watching. If you like more of this content or maybe you've injured yourself and you want me to make a video on how to do your own rehabilitation, your own physical rehab in, in the privacy of your own home with simple things like resistance bands, lacrosse balls, and ice packs, um, let me know in the comments down below if there's something you want me to focus a little bit more on. I can do more of these videos. Or if you just like this content, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and thanks for watching. Have a good one.